This is the Cyclone Dust Collector that I built for the blasting cabinet that I have out in my automotive shop. It's a Harbor Freight blasting cabinet. A lot of people have those and there's a lot of videos on YouTube on what to do to a Harbor Freight blasting cabinet to get it to perform decent for you. And I've taken some of those ideas but I've also got some of my own ideas in it. So now that I have this fixed I'm going to take it out to the automotive shop and we're going to hook this back up and I'd like to go over some of the changes that I made to my blasting cabinet that I think are pretty neat and uh, have really made it a, a high performing piece of equipment for me out in the garage. So first thing we got to do is get out there. watching on the mark with mark it's heavier than i remembered of course it had to be raining Okay, let's get this thing back into position so that we can start using it with the blasting cabinet here. I had temporarily put this uh, small shop vac in here that I was using to keep the dust down. Uh, I had to set it on that little bucket there. in here. There we go. Now we're fully armed again with the uh, cyclone on the blasting cabinet. So let's take a look at this blasting cabinet. I want to show you some of the neat things, you know, modifications that everybody makes to these Harbor Freight blasting cabinets to make them so that they're actually a really nice tool to have. This is how I start out when I come to my blasting cabinet. I always store my fender protectors on top of the blasting cabinet. So that way when I'm ready to use it, I pull it off of here and then there's not a layer of dust on the glass right here because that is always the problem, is being able to see in here. So uh, I watched several YouTube videos, and one of the things that they have on there is to replace the plastic that you look through here. And one of the things to make that easier is you put these little, it's like a barrel bolt. And what I did is I put uh, rib nuts in the holes where the original screws went in, and now I can do everything from the top here, unscrew those, pull them off, and then I went to the hardware store and I bought like three pieces of glass that fit in here. Now the glass is gonna get etched over time, and when it gets so cloudy that you can't see it through it very well, then from the top, I'll take it apart and throw the piece of glass away and I'll throw another one in here. They're not that expensive. The piece on the top here is the original piece of plastic that came with this blasting cabinet because if that glass should ever break for some reason, I don't know, maybe you're flipping a part over or something like that and you got your face right down there, that could be a real safety issue. So this top la layer is still the plastic. Now what came with this blasting cabinet was these plastic stickers that you stuck on the bottom side of, of this top piece of, of plastic. And that works, you know, you replace them, but you had to get in here and uh, try to 
get that thing on there straight from reaching in from the end like that. So they were really kind of a pain to try to use. And the adhesive on them was only on the top and the bottom. They were long strips and the sand would sometimes get in from the end and then you're trying to look through the sand. So that really didn't work very well. You might notice that this cabinet has the light box on the top, on the outside. Now the latest version of this blasting cabinet that I see Harbor Freight selling doesn't have this thing on top of here and the lights are mounted on the inside and that seems to be causing a lot of problems for people. But this version of it, I don't have any issues with it at all. It puts good light in there and uh, I, I could make changes to it, but I don't see any need to. So if you run across one of these on Craigslist or something, an older Harbor Freight blasting cabinet, and you see that it's got this box on the top side, then I would probably go for that rather than get a newer one. Um, I've seen them pretty cheap. I did buy mine new, but I've, gosh, I've had this thing for probably 10 years, I think. And uh, so, so that's a couple of modifications I made. I changed the way that works. And another thing, you might notice how tall this thing is here. I'm six feet tall, and this thing was fairly short when I bought it. The way they determined how high this thing was going to be was by the length of the angle iron that they could fit in the box. So you'll notice here, this angle iron is the same length as the cabinet. So then it gets bolted on down here. And you can see, it looks like I added probably 10 inches to the height, the length of the legs for this thing. And I did that for two reasons. The main reason was I didn't want to have to be bending over to look into the blasting cabinet because it's, if you've got any, I mean, you got a job to do in this thing, you can be sitting at this thing for, oh, I don't know, I probably never blasted for an hour straight, but 30 minutes is not uncommon. That's a fairly big blasting job. And what I was doing was I had to bend over and be working like this. Well, I'm 60 years old and uh, I've really <laughs> messed up my back a lot of times and, and that's just hard on me. So if I can stand up straight and work on something, boy, that's what I wanna do. So what I looked at was how high is my elbow and I made this so that my elbows just come in there. And then this is where, this is where, see how I, I'm not bent over at all? So I raised mine quite a bit. Okay, so that was the main reason. But the other thing that happened was, look at this leg. See that one? I was moving this thing around the shop a uh, good, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And I had it on two furniture dollies and when it went across the garage floor, it was kind of uneven. And one of the legs came off of the furniture dolly and then the dolly moved out of the way. And then of course it decided to lean that way. And I think I was reaching around the hitch of a trailer or something. And the whole thing fell off of the furniture dolly. And while angle iron is pretty strong, this really is an angle iron. This is bent sheet metal. And this was the leg that it fell towards. And, you know, it's got decent strength in certain directions, but not this way. So it just got mangled and I uh, just hated that. So that was kind of a motivator for me to go about getting the longer legs for this. And I wish I had some costs on this. This is real angle iron here. And what I did is I just matched the the size of this angle iron. And then I told the guys at the steel place that I wanted the thinnest wall angle iron that they had, you know, the lightest gauge, but, but it's real angle iron. It's not just bent sheet metal. And then I got four of them. And then of course I had to drill the holes in them. And then uh, I dipped them in uh, black dip and grip. And I got a sample of it. This is probably a good place to show you how I was, how I did the dip and grip here. So I've got several pictures here. So let's go through some of those pictures and you'll see how I was able to do that.
So here, this is some of that leftover stuff that was in that little tray that I had the dip and grip in. And I did this, oh, probably three years ago. And, and look at this stuff. This stuff is still super flexible. I mean, it's, it's, it's really nice stuff because I don't like having metal contacting my garage floor. I always try to keep um, a piece of conveyor belt or even a piece of wood or something between metal and the garage floor because I just don't like rust stains on my garage floor. So the original legs had a little plastic cap that slid onto these and it did not fit on the new angle iron. So basically I custom formed some new rubber feet to go on the bottom of that. So that worked out really well. The most important thing that I did with this blasting cabinet, and you'll see this all over the internet when it comes to Harbor Freight blasting cabinet. So my review would not be complete without talking about the modification to the siphon tube on this thing. And there's a lot of people that have instructions, and this is the one I used. And it's by a guy, uh, let's see, it says started by Ron Dog in uh, October of 2006. So this has been around for a while. Actually, he's got August 25th, 2005. And this guy did a really nice job of illustrating how to adjust, how to change the siphon tube. And he's got dimensions on here and where to drill holes. And uh, he, he basically changes the way that it draws air in from the bottom and pulls the blasting media with it. And, uh, and then here you can see where you, you crimp off the bottom of one of the tubes here and uh, it, it's night and day. I wanted to add a, uh, a foot pedal you know, foot valve to this thing so I don't have to pull the trigger. I'm still running the original gun here. Looks like it's probably ready for a new porcelain nozzle. But I haven't changed anything in here. People complain about these, but I don't think it's this trigger mechanism. I, I think it's mainly just that the way the siphon tube is set up. So I will, um, I'll give credit Ron Dog here and uh, um, I'll, I'll put it uh, on the screen there. This guy really nailed what needs to be done with this. And uh, I would say, when I first got it and was using it, probably 50% of the time I was actually getting blasting media coming through the tube and hitting stuff. And, and you can you can feel it when it hits something and, and when you're just blowing air, you know, and then I'd be slapping the side of the cabinet to try to get uh, blasting media to go up the tube. And uh, it, it kind of didn't work with you. It worked against you. And so I knew something needed to be done, and I was looking at a lot of different things. And this guy has got a setup where you cut part of this tube off, and you bend it out, and you use some JB weld, and you drill some holes. I don't think I had to buy any new parts. You just modify what's here. And then after that, I'm not going to claim that it's perfect, but if it was only shooting 50% of the time, it, now it shoots 90 95% of the time. I mean, it's just, it's just hogging away, you know, taking off rust or paint or whatever it is you're doing. And uh, it never seems to hang up. I don't think I've slapped the cabinet since I started doing it that way. And, of course, everything's just falling down into the cabinet again and getting recycled. So this is one of my favorite tools. And I was showing it to my son. And he was probably maybe 12 years old at the time. Boy, maybe younger than that. I'm not sure. But anyway... He uh, blasted a few of my parts for me, and uh, I thought he coined the phrase pretty good. He said, Dad, this is like painting clean, and, and I just love it. Um, 
the media I'm using right now, I just got it at Menards, and they, they call it abrasive blasting media, black blast. They don't really say what it is. I, I don't know what this is. Used for rust paint remover. But anyway, that's what I'm running in here right now. And I've got a bucket in here, so if I wanted to change out the blasting media, it's got a real nice door on the bottom. You could open it up and everything would fall out, and I keep a five-gallon bucket down here. There's probably just less than five gallons in here. And then once you got it empty, then you take the trigger, and now it's just blowing air because there's no media in it. And you dust out the inside of the cabinet and get all of the black stuff out of it, and uh, it'll all just fall into your bucket. And then maybe you're going to run uh, baking soda in it, or uh, guys will run crushed walnut shells is another thing you can use. Um, also, there's glass beads. So it's like different grits, you know, different materials. You're going to put something plastic in there. You might want to use the glass beads or maybe the walnut shells. I think the walnut shells is the least abrasive thing that still works, but uh, you have to go real careful with it. I I've never used it. Um, I've heard it being used on brass parts before, and it will leave a real nice finish on it. The last thing you really want to do is get uh, a, a real heavy grit material in there and, uh, and, and pit things. They call it, you can get sandblasting pitting, and it just leaves a real rough surface. You know, you'll probably have to put two or three layers of primer on it and sand it to get your metal part to look smooth again. Another thing is, if you have something that is sheet metal, that's small. I did the back of a mirror one time for a lady. It was a, uh, a medicine cabinet, and uh, I just wanted to get the paint off of it. So I sandblasted the back of this cabinet, and that sheet metal took, back, took on the shape of the coil that it came from. It was flat, but after I sandblasted it, it became it went back to being a coil. So I've seen what happens if you overshoot something, especially sheet metal. you got to watch out for that. If you got a cast iron part, cast iron, depending on how rough your casting is, man, you can throw gravel at that stuff and uh, clean it up well, and it'll just take it. Uh, I always do try to cover over any machined surfaces or delicate parts. And the crazy thing about the blasting cabinet, and most of you probably know this, is it isn't good for taking dirt off of things or grease off of things. It has to be kind of a, a brittle sort of a thing, like rust or paint. It has to be sort of hard. So you can use that to your advantage. If you've got a part that's got like an old decal on it or something that you want to save, you can tape over that with masking tape and trim it real cool, real close. And you can blast pretty close to it as long as you just don't stay right on it it'll stay there it won't it won't take the even tape off so another little trick you can do there so that covers it for this video this is what I did with my Harbor Freight blasting cabinet my light box was okay so I didn't do anything with it but I changed the way that glass works and I added the long legs to it and then I fixed my siphon tube on it. This was the most important thing to make the blasting cabinet work like a tool that wants to work with you. Probably all, all, all of those things. I mean, I had to do it. You, you have to be able to see, and if you're bent over too far, it's just going to kill your back. Now, I've seen where people put them up on uh, a furniture dolly. That's a good idea. I didn't think that would get it up high enough for me, so I didn't want to go that way, plus I had that bad experience with the furniture dollies anywhere, anyway, and I, I just don't see myself ever moving this. This is uh, kind of its dedicated spot, and it stays here, so for it to be on wheels kind of didn't really add any value to me, so I didn't want to go that route. There's probably other ways of making the legs longer, but I just like the completeness, you know, one piece, nice good angle iron legs. Um, I painted them up pretty nice. Uh, you probably saw that in the pictures. So now that I got my good old uh, my Cyclone back in service, now 
this thing is ready to run again. I mean, I was doing okay with the shop vac, but the problem with the shop vac is, is that dust coming off of there is the very fine stuff, and it comes in and it just plugs the filter real quick, and then you kind of don't get much vacuum. That's why that cyclone is so important on something like this. So you can build a cyclone out of a 35 gallon drum and all that was was a shop vac that I kind of split apart and put the cyclone in the middle of and uh, changed the way the filter was on it with the filter box. You could probably use the original shop vac filter with it but I went this route so I hope this adds some value to somebody that's looking at buying maybe an older Harbor Freight blasting cabinet that somebody hasn't modified yet. I could see where a guy could get really frustrated with it and just want to get rid of it. But these things are diamonds in the rough. They can be very good and they're not expensive. This is another home run from Harbor Freight. So thanks for watching my video. This was uh, a good one to do on a nice rainy day. I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, it's raining pretty good outside and blowing. So thanks for watching my video. If you thought this video had some value, hit the like button. And if you subscribe, I do Corvette videos. I tell stories. I do woodworking, other shop type related stuff. So it's a variety of things right now. So if you like watching somebody else working for a change, subscribe to my video. Thanks. Good, good, good. I'll give credit. Oh no, I got my hands dirty. That'll never fly. Where's my stuff?